Hi, I'm Tim Mao with X-Rite, and in this video, I'm going to introduce you to transmission measurements with the X-Rite CI7000 series of benchtop devices. So we'll take a look at the transmission kit that's required to do these transmission measurements, the components within that kit, how each of them is used for various types of transmission measurements. Then we'll take the kit and use it with a device to actually set up, calibrate, and take some transmission measurements and then finally, we'll take a look at the laser targeting that allows us to see where the transmission measurement will be occurring. So let's get started. So let's take a look at our CI7000 series transmission kit, and we'll go ahead and open that up and walk you through the pieces that are in here and how we're going to use them. So to start with here in the front center, we've got the white transmission calibration plaque. We've got the black blocker we call it it's a little square piece of plastic in here there is also and i've already removed the paper from around this so you can see it a little better a cuvette for doing liquid measurements talk a little more about that in just a second and then the key here really is this right which is the piece that will go into the transmission chamber and hold a variety of fixtures to hold our samples. Let's take a look at that. It's got a couple of magnets on the bottom because that's what's going to lock it in place. It also has a couple of pins here that will align with holes recessed in the transmission compartment and then combined with the magnets will lock it in place depending upon what kind of measurement we need to do. So we'll take a look at how we're going to use that in just a second here. Um, we also have four different aperture plates for the front of the device um, and we'll talk about why the necessity of those and why they are different than the reflectance ones um, a little later in this video. So essentially if I'm going to do liquid measurements I would take this piece which you can see is made with a spot to hold the cuvette whoops helps if I load it correctly in place this would attach via these little thumb screws right here to that device and then this is spring loaded to slide things back and forth so if i need to slide it out to pull the sample the cuvette away and then this the spring will cause this to come up against a stop where we know we're in the same place every time for a measurement okay so that's for measuring liquids with a cuvette Likewise, I'm going to use that same fixture, this, if I'm going to do what we call film measurement, which might be something that's in shape like this plastic square. It might be um, a piece of plastic film, anything like that. I've got essentially four different sizes. I can show you that really easily like this. All right. Those are the four different apertures. You can see the different openings inside of those. Move them around a little bit since it's black on black. It's a little hard to see. You can see the different sizes of them. So there's two for each because what will happen is one of them, these are both the 25 millimeter, for example, one piece is going to connect down here and sit against the sphere, for example. The other piece is going to connect here and then the spring load will cause these two to behave like a clamp and hold the sample in place with the opening just the right size for me to do my 25 millimeter aperture. And of course, we've got the other sizes, both pieces. So if I was going to do the other extreme from 25 mil and I was going to be doing six millimeter, I'd have this piece and this piece coming together to hold the sample in place to do the measurement of a very small area. So those are the components inside of this kit. So let's move on and take some of these and put them together and actually do some measurements. So now that we've reviewed the various pieces inside the transmission kit, let's put them to use. So here is my CI7800 instrument. To start, I'm gonna open up the transmission compartment. To do that, I simply pull up on the spring-loaded latch and I can slide the door back, gets me access to the compartment. So the first piece I'm going to need is this film holder, which I've assembled from the kit. I've got the 25 millimeter aperture pieces in place. You'll see that there are two of them and it essentially works like a clamp, a spring-loaded clamp to hold the sample in place. Now, if I were gonna be doing direct transmission measurements, I would line the pins up and 
lock, slide them into place. There's a magnet there that holds it and the device would be ready to do direct transmission. I, however, am going to be doing total transmission, which means I've got to put the sample up by the sphere, not by the optics. And so I got to slide that around and get it to position properly where it belongs up against the sphere. So that's all set. Next, we're going to replace the aperture plate. So this is the 25 millimeter aperture plate for reflectance, and I'm but I'm doing 25 millimeter transmission. So you'll notice the reflectance plate is silver on the on the back, just like it is on the front, where the 25 millimeter reflectance plate is actually white. That's because that white coating is going to help us essentially complete the sphere, if you will. We'll talk about that a little more in just a second. So we put that in place. Then I need my white transmission plaque, which is also made of that same kind of coating. And if you look, um, it's kind of like a little fitted cap that actually snaps, if you will, or cr crimps and attaches right to the sample arm so that I can put that in place. Now for the vast majority of my transmission measurements, I'm never gonna move this. And its purpose is not to be measured like we would in reflectance, but its purpose is to complete the sphere. So between the aperture plate and that calibration white, we're completing the sphere to try and direct all the light back out through the sample that I'll be measuring here. So we've got one more piece that we'll use in a minute when we calibrate, and that's this black plastic. Um, that's to block the light. So let's switch the view here a moment to see our software and our instrument simultaneously. And we're going to go in to calibrate our transmission measurement. And so the software comes up and tells me to read the white transmission standard. That's just this. Now, typically I'd close the door when I'm doing a measurement if, if possible. Um, it's not required. Um, we'll leave it open so you can see what's going on. You see the instrument flash as we do the white measurement. And now the software says to read with a black plastic blocking panel in. And what this is gonna do, I lock it in just like I was gonna measure a sample, let the clamp hold it in place. It's gonna prevent any light from passing through so that we can see what a zero calibration looks like. We go ahead and take that measurement, that calibration, and our calibration is completed. So now we're ready to take measurements. So I'm gonna open the clamp up, take that black plastic out, and I've got two different samples I'm gonna measure just to give you some examples of how this might work. First is literally the blue plastic bag. It's from the sample kit, the transmission kit that the aperture, one of the aperture plates was in. It's got a, a light bluish tint to it and, and is similar to something you might want to measure. And so of course, if I'm gonna do that, I simply gonna put this in place, let it hold it in place like that. I'd come into my software and maybe I want to, I'm gonna measure this as a trial. It's gonna pop up and tell me, I wanna measure a blue film, we'll call it. And if I hit next, just like that, I've taken a measurement and I've now got percent of transmittance for that particular piece as measured by the device. And it's just that simple to take a transmission measurement. Now, I wanna show you a second sample because this one's small and fits in there very easily. The second one happens to actually be from um, a storage container. Um, and this piece, I can tell you, is about a foot and a half by two feet, um, fairly large, um, but that's okay. We can still handle that. I can open the clamp. I can position this sample where it needs to be measured. Now I gotta hold on to it because otherwise its weight will tip it in or out. But my sample can extend as far as I need to beyond the device that way or this way. And I still have the ability for it to be in place like that. We'll give this one a, we'll just call it lid. We'll hit next and we're gonna go ahead and measure that. And now you can see the lid has a very different, because it's nearly clear, transmission curve than the blue does. But that it's that easy for us to do, for do, us to do sorry, transmission measurements Likewise, as we saw in the kit, we have the ability to do liquid measurements. If we had liquids loaded in the cuvette there, same process, same procedure. And that's how we do transmission measurements with the CI 7000 series of benchtop devices.
So now I want to briefly show you the targeting capabilities of our transmission measurement. And to do that, I'm going to use this large sample again. I'm just going to set it in here. It's not actually like I would measure it, but I'm holding it at an angle like this so you can see it. There's a button on the front of the, in of the instrument that has an eye, what looks like an eyeball kind of uh, image on it. If I press that, it's going to turn on a little late green laser light that you'll see illuminates on the sample right here where the measurement would be taking place. So if I have a sample in place, I can hit that button. The green will highlight where the measurement is taking place, regardless of where the sample is sitting, whichever um, type of transmission measurement I'm doing. And I can be very sure that I've aligned things properly before I do the measurement. And I just simply press the button again, and it turns the laser targeting light back off. So that concludes our review of the transmission measurement capabilities of the CI7000 series of benchtop devices. Hopefully you found this helpful. We also have additional resources available to you. You can see them here. Come to our website, call us, follow us on social media. We would love to help you. Thank you for following along and have a great day.